The illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who can't read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. Alvin Toffler. Welcome to Flourish. I'm Diane Planadin, and you're in the right place if you're ready to create an inspired life. And we do so by working on our own personal development. So we can be strong role models for those we love and mentor and strong for our own personal well-being. We continue our journey through the best-selling book called The Source by Dr. Tara Swart. And she talks about this week on the malleable mind, how we all have that super neuroplasticity within us. Doesn't matter what age you are, doesn't matter what stage of life you're at, doesn't matter where you live, you can reprogram your own brain and strengthen it for the better. The brain, being malleable, is capable of reversing a wide range of changes that might otherwise seem inevitable. Resignation to some of the symptoms of aging and to any decline in mental or physical function in itself can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. This is because the brain is resource sensitive. And how do you do this pathway to new you? Well, it takes a lot longer to improve emotional intelligence than it does to master a new gym routine. But neuroplasticity promises that with dedicated effort, change will come. This is the principle of neuroplasticity, the power to create new pathways in the subconscious and conscious part of our brain. It is the key to any deep and lasting shift in our habits and thinking. Now, that is a little overwhelming when you first think about it. Because if you can't even get yourself to the gym, how are you going to retrain your brain for the better? Well, she says you do this by repetition. Repetition, repetition. And once that routine is in your brain, it strengthens the neural pathways. But here's the caveat, whether good or bad. So ask yourself, what am I thinking about? What am I dwelling upon? What's holding me back? It's those negative vibes that you're allowing your brain to actually get stronger. So if you're reliving a bad experience, maybe it was somebody who was talking about you and they didn't really know the truth. And it's bugging you. And it's bugging you because your friends I'll believe them rather than asking you what's going on. That's a bad thought. You have to let go of that thought, let it go, and practice letting it go. The more you can suppress that negative thought, the better. It's all for your own personal brain health. She goes on to say, uh, and, and she does reiterate, the more you really relive a memory and or the more intense the emotions associated with that memory, the stronger the connection becomes. Ah, this is a result of repetition as well as the intensity of emotion, making it either a fond memory that easily floats to the front of the mind or a dreaded memory that you want to forget, but keep reinforcing by mulling it over. Here we are today about your malleable mind to discuss how you are capable of rebuilding the pathways with dedicated effort. But it has to make sense to you personally. Where to start? She says, reclaim your power. Would you be happier, healthier, and have better relationships? Would you have a life? full of abundance, flexibility, and greater trust. This is a paradigm shift in the big picture. Upgrade the software. <laughs> Pretend you're a coder for a second. To transform the data, your thoughts, an engineer working behind the scenes to fine-tune the hardware itself, your neurons. 
You are the architect, designer, and housekeeper of the source with the power to create, maintain, and destroy your neural connections. This process is neuroplasticity in action. So, letting go, letting go, she says, of past loss or hurt can be the hardest change to make in the brain, but often this very pathway is the one that is driving the shame, mistrust, and inability to forgive. It keeps us stuck. Our brains are constantly evolving, refining, and learning in response to everything we experience, events, emotions, and people. And we need to be aware of this and manage what we expose to our brains and how we deal with the impact. You have to repeat by overriding what you already have going on. If you believe that (laughs) you're not confident, then you won't be confident. You have to build yourself up from the inside out and just take action and move forward. And you'll gradually build that up, just like you would a physical muscle. You can build your mental muscle by letting go of those negative thoughts and building up something more positive that's going to actually make a difference in your life. We're all here for a reason in what you're doing with your time here. Well, might as well get started today. Might as well. I I know people who are still talking about poor old me 20 years later. What have you been doing for 20 years except for feeling sorry for yourself? Start today. Start now. Let's go. Move into action. (laughs) Oh, I just love this because it's proven. This is science. This is not me making stuff up. This is science. He goes on to say, we really can radically change our brains and therefore ourselves with effort and persistence. And she gives an example about playing a musical instrument and how it can lead to great increases in neuroplasticity and new connections all over the brain. The neuronal mass of number of regions of musicians' brains is far denser than that of non-musicians. They have better memory processing and problem-solving skills. Your brain is remarkable. It's resilient and it's plastic. And in this context, the changes most of us are hoping to make are relatively small, (laughs) which is encouraging. I like that. So let's talk about the mechanisms of neuroplasticity. In scientific terms, there are three distinct processes for neuroplasticity, learning, perfecting, and retraining. Think about the opening quote, learn, unlearn, relearn. She talks about learning. That's the most obvious form. It relates to synaptic connections, knitting together those neurons. There appears to be at least two types of modifications that occur in the brain with this type of neuroplasticity. A change in the internal structure of the neurons and an actual increase in the number of connections between neurons. But what about perfecting? Perfecting correlates with a process called myelination, a sort of speeding up of the way the neurons work by starting to coat them in white, fatty, electrical insulating layers, myelin. That is your A grade skill. The first girl learning, she she considers it more like your B grade skill. And then there's retraining. The scientific term for this third process of neuroplasticity is neurogenesis. It's not as well understood as the other two. However, she says this is where the hard work comes from. This is hard work and time-consuming as it needs to be followed by learning and possibly perfecting. Possibly perfecting. 
So the more you can get that repetition going, perfecting what you've learned, the better those connections are. Repetition, 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 and even better is if you can associate an emotion to it. So let me give you, a, for instance, with the uh, playing a musical instrument, the piano. <laughs> That's overwhelming. That's a lot to take in. 52 keys, holy moly, and hand-eye coordination. But over time, with repetition, not only can you play and read music, it's in your bones. You can feel it. And that is the peak experience that we all want. You only get there by working for it and repeating it. Put yourself on repeat. She says, focus only on what you can do now and what you want your future to look like. A lesson to take away from this is to stick with it when the going gets tough and stop wasting time comparing yourself to others or even your own past achievements. Focus only on what you can do now and what you want your future to look like. Man, don't beat yourself up. Never surrender. Never give up. She gives yourself some tips. Ask yourself how much each of the following factors you currently have in your life and how you might be able to introduce more of them. Novelty, such as a travel, learning new skills, or <laughs> new experiences, that can stimulate the growth of new neurons. Try something new. Aerobic exercise. This has been found to increase Oxygen-rich blood flow to the brain and allow us to release brain-derived neurotrophic factors, the endorphin that allows the growth of new neurons. Get those steps in every day. Do something for yourself. Third is emotional stimulation. The more you experience something and the more intense the emotion associated with it, the more powerful is the effect on the brain make those emotions positive emotions because like we talked about just a few minutes ago it can also be negative emotions and those get locked in as strong memories and those are really hard to suppress and you know there's a statistic about when you have a bad experience you are more likely to sell, tell more people about your bad experience than a good one I think the odds are nine people to three people about good or bad experiences. And that's just our human nature. But every time you tell those people about something bad, you're reinforcing the negative. So maybe one little tip. Try just not saying it out loud. And then try, and I'm talking about the negative, not the positive, suppressing, coming up with a go-to. Oh, that thought's back in my brain. What can I do? What should I do? Have a plan. What can move that needle for you? Do you need to take a breath? Do you need to take a walk? Do you need to put on your favorite song? Do you need to do what you love? What is your favorite hobby? Is it cooking? Get in the kitchen, open the fridge, get creative, reset your mindset, get distracted if need be. Not on social media. Though. <laughs> We're not trying to introduce time sucks here. We're just trying to introduce some ideas on how you can take advantage of how malleable your brain is. Okay, she goes on to say, Neuroplasticity is directed by repetition for good or ill, so it's worth remembering that negative thinking and addictive behavior can become self perpetuating, serving to further embed anxiety, depression, obsessive thinking, and aggression. Once you fully grasp that fact, 
you can see why it's so important to harness the power of neuroplasticity to work in your own best interest, to embrace the principle of abundance and that power of metacognition. When it comes to the brain, it is difficult to unlearn something that has been etched into your brain and much easier to overwrite unwanted thoughts and behaviors with new desired ones new desired ones. And if you've been watching this show a while, you know that my father has Alzheimer's and I work very hard, very hard on my brain power (laughs) to change things up. So if you're not ready to learn to play a musical instrument, learn something extremely new, how to do, learn a new language, whatever that might be, start with learning to use both hands. That's where I started. And it was fascinating. Now I'm completely ambidextrous. I can use both hands to brush my teeth, to paint a wall, still working on the writing part, but it built neurons. And if you want to see this physically in action, start by brushing your teeth with your left hand. It's going to feel really weird in the beginning, (laughs) really weird, or vice versa, depending if you're left-handed or right-handed. It doesn't really matter. Whatever your non-primary hand is, because the sensors we have in our fingers are just incredible, but that's a whole other topic, start there and try it every day and see what happens because you will get better at it as you're building those new connections. And then you'll never forget, just like riding a bicycle. Just an idea, if you don't know where to start, and if you wonder, hmm, does this stuff really work? That's exactly how it works. So she goes on to say, what would you like to overwrite in your brain? Which new habits would you like to make? And what new, more helpful pathways could you create in your brain to support your changes? Are there any addictions you need to let go of? Understanding that you can do all of this by using the power of your brain's neuroplasticity is the first step of your journey with the source. And that's why I mentioned brushing your teeth. If you can't believe that you can give up a habit or an addiction, let's say smoking, let's say overeating, let's say anything, fill in the blank. What is it that is not healthy for you personally, physically, mentally, spiritually, that you want to let go of and you just don't know where to start? I started with learning to use both my hands in almost everything I do. I'm still learning to write, (laughs) remember that one. (laughs) But it's that little baby step, it's that repetition, good or bad, that you can try today for free on your own in private without anybody even knowing what you're doing because you're doing it for you. And only you. And if you can add an emotion to that. So the emotion for me for working on my brain power was (laughs) that I want to do everything humanly possible not to have to go through what my father has gone through. You don't want to see that in a parent, in a friend, in a sibling, in anybody. And it's it's my preventative me- it's my preventative medicine for myself, and I'm here for free on YouTube or the podcast, wherever you're listening to the show around the world. If you could subscribe to the YouTube channel, that would be absolutely fantastic because it's free and. It would help me be able to help you continue to live an inspired life. So if you like the show, share it with somebody you know. And hey, 
hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss the next chapter. I'll see you soon.